glory to God. Amen. Once again, we welcome you back to our Bible study, our part two series. Amen. And I'm trusting glory to God for our first part series that you was blessed. Amen. And that you invited somebody else, even though it's probably, the, you know, the summer months. Amen. But however, though, uh, whenever you're watching it, glory to God, and you thought it was interesting, it would be a blessing to somebody else then I want you to at least say tune in, amen. You can go back and watch it any time that you want to, amen, but encourage other people if it's been a blessing to you, amen. And we ask that you also give us the comments, amen. In our comment section, you can comment, amen. And me and Pastor, glory to God, we definitely want to continue to improve, amen. But main thing, we want to encourage the body of Christ, so once again, we do thank God. So let's set the atmosphere for our second part series, and then we're going to proceed from there. Amen. So, Father, we do thank you right now for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We thank you, Lord God, that the entrance of the word give it light. It give it understanding even unto the simple. God, I pray for my brothers and sisters, God, however, whatever type of day they had, God, I know that it was your new mercy and your great grace that kept them all day long. And we just want to glorify you and thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for blessing us in our going out and our coming in. And we give you glory and honor for it right now. And God, we acknowledge that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And you said if we acknowledge you, then you will direct our path. So I receive your wisdom right now. Your ability, Lord God, is to minister as to myself as well as to the listeners and my sisters and brothers. So I thank you in advance for doing it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, and thank God. Amen. Well, listen, glory to God, we're going to get right back into our series. Amen. And we've been talking about when God speaks, glory to God, when God speaks. And we left off, amen, I'm going to just get right back into this thing. Amen, I, because I, I got a lot of information that I wanted to cover out of chapter 7. And so if I have to come back again or, or the following week, uh, then I will actually do that. But right now, glory to God. We left off, amen, talking about when God speaks. Now, it's not optional. It's not optional. One thing that I found out when I was writing this uh, God was saying, we need to hear the voice of God. It's not optional. We need to hear the voice of God. <clears throat> we talked about in Revelation eight times in the book of Revelation where the fact that God said, he that has an ear to hear, let us hear what the Spirit said unto the church. Okay? Because the Holy Ghost is the one that's going. He's the superintendent of the church. Oh, yes. He's a real superintendent. Yes. <laughs> if you want to know what a superintendent is, he is a real superintendent of the church. I know they got many uh, superintendents in uh, Sunday school and all of this, church schools and all of that. But he's the real superintendent of the church, the Holy Ghost. And so he said, I want you to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Why is it the fact remained of the Spirit? Because here's the thing. Uh, the Holy Ghost, he hears from Jesus. The, the, the Jesus said he will take a mind and show it unto you. The Holy Ghost will take up his and show it unto us. Yes. And so I understand, glory to God, that the Holy Ghost is going to uh, operate by the direction of Christ. You hear what I'm saying? And so, so uh, even, even, even in, in creation, the Holy Spirit was the executioner. He executed. He carried out the action of God the Father, God the Son. Okay? He carried out when God said in the book of Genesis, I'm just going right back here in the book of Genesis so you understand the superintendent part. When God said, light be, okay? When God said, light be, you hear what I'm saying? 
In but beginning, he said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. But the, the Holy Ghost, the, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the, the Holy Ghost was, was there. But in creation here, glory to God, God said, light be. And when God said it, then the Holy Ghost moved up on the face of, of the darkness, okay, and up on the waters. So the Holy Ghost is the executioner. He execute, he carry out. And so in order for us to hear the voice of God, it's got to be through the executioner, the, 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 the execute, the person carried it out. So the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to cause me is to hear the voice of God, okay? Now, he said we must be still and know that he's God. We must be still and know that he's God. In Psalm 46 and 10, I say this again. In Psalm 46 and 10, I'm saying that for their sister, glory to God, they gave me a call and said, don't go so fast, Brother John, with the scriptures. Okay. In Psalm 46 and 10, he simply said, he said, and be still and know that I am God. He won't, God won't do anything unless he chooses to do it. Understand this. God chooses to speak. He can speak through any method he wants to choose. He can choose his own way of speaking. Yes. His own way of speaking, God can do that. God will not speak nothing that we say. Listen. God will not speak anything. He will not speak nothing that we say or do that matters. God will not do that. When God speaks an issue, what matters to God is that we obey what he says at that time. It's not a matter of, of my opinion. When God says something, it only matters when I obey it matters to God, my obedience. Yes, this is the issue that we definitely need to uh, get a hold to. Now, God, would, he don't care about my matters. He care about his matters. So what matters to God is that we obey what he says at that given time. If God is saying something to you at that given time, it matters to God. God don't like no delays. You hear what I'm saying? Now unless he tell you to delay in doing it. But if God says something to you, he wants you and I is to do it. Okay? So we have, we, we have no say-so in the matter when God says something. We have no say-so in the matter when God says something. <clears throat> now, I want to explain this. You have a right now is to question God on anything you want to. Listen, we have no say-so in the matter when God says something. But you do have a right, hallelujah, is to question God on anything you want. We do have that right now. You hear what I'm saying? I want you to understand, you do have that right is to question God on matters. But I want you to understand, even after you question God, God has the final word. <laughs> God has the last word on the matter. I found that out, boy. I tell you, glory to God. Because here's the thing, because God knows what's best for us. Now, we can say something, okay? We can ask God for things, but God is the one that knows whether or not we, 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 we need it or not. Yes. He knows whether or not we need it or not. In other words, there was a, there was a show called Father Knows Best. Well, he certainly does. When we 
ask for something, God know whether or not we need it or not. God know whether or not it's going to be beneficial to us. It's going to be a hindrance to us. Is it going to draw our love away from him? You hear what I'm saying? So, so when we ask God for something, I want you to understand this, that God knows. He knows exactly whether you have need of it or not. And so this is what we got to definitely get a hold to. So when we ask God for things, he knows whether or not we need it or not. He knows. Many people that ask him for husband and wives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But God knows whether or not you, you, you ready for one or not. He might just allow you to circumstance will if for you to just have it because your flesh wants it. And then you'd be wishing to God that you had never got that man or that woman. Okay? So God knows what's best. He knows whether or not you have need of that. Amen. He can allow you to override. Hallelujah. Now, we, knew, we need to know whether or not this is the will of God. That's the next thing. We need to know whether or not it is the will of, it is the will of God. And I say that, I mean in that. Now that our pastor have taught us about the, all of the wills of God, which was a great teaching. <laughs> now, now, you got God, divine will, God got perfect will. You got God's circumstances will. You see? So, so uh, you probably need to say, uh, we need to know whether or not this is the divine will of God or perfect will of God for my life. That's what we need to do. And so we need to check that out and actually see. Amen. Is, is it the divine will of God? Is that what you want me to do, God? You need to ask the question. Is that what you want me to do? If God don't want you to do it, then don't do it. So you, it's so quite key to ask questions. God, is this what you want me to do? Then you will get an amen in your spirit, man. I wanted to get to that part too. Glory to God. You will get an amen. And how do you know, glory to God, that you get an amen? I use this all the time. Hallelujah. In uh, 1 John 3, uh, 20 and 21, it simply said, if our heart condemn us, if our heart become restless in our conscience, then you don't have the peace of God. And I'm, just, I'm going through it quickly because, in fact, I got a lot of material I want to cover. But in verse 21, 1 John 3, 20 and 21, 21 said, but if our heart condemn us not, if there is no restlessness in our spirit man, then you can proceed on. You know that you got peace with God at that particular time. Glory to God. And so I want you to understand, amen, that you can know whether or not you are in the will of God or not. Glory to God. I, I, I got... Um, I got my pencil here. I was, I was going to be sure that I really did have this when I got to this particular point. So when God speaks, what he says matters. When God speaks, what he says matters. I definitely want to get that in there. When God speaks, what he says matters. Now, <clears throat> in a 24-hour period, can you actually say that God directed every hour of your 24-hour period? Listen, if, now, if you make a chart on a piece of paper, glory to God, I, 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 I got my pencil. You make a chart on a piece of paper, all right? And you write down everything that happened every hour of the 24-hour time period. Write down 24 on your paper. How much of it can you say God had something to do with it? Y'all, you hear me? In your 24-hour period, can you actually say, glory to God, that you actually uh, uh, had God to direct you every 24 hours? 
And I will answer myself, I did not, and I have not. Not in 24 hours, I have not. Amen. So how much of it can you say God has had something to say or do with it? Now, that's tough. That is a tough, okay? Everything that you did in that hour, think about it. Think about it. Did God, glory to God, direct me to do this? In that 24-hour period, you can write that down and you say, you, you start when you first get up, glory to God, and you say, did God direct me to look at this? Did God direct me to think this in this 24-hour period? I'm telling you, that's how you should actually analyze. And, and this is the individual test, okay? Was my thinking on these things without thinking the way God told me to think in this 24-hour period? You, you know, the Bible do say uh, uh, whatever thing that lovely was the thing that the true world things are under, Philippians 4, 8, amen. Think on these things. So, so am I putting forth this uh, Philippians 4, chapter, verse 8, and I, I, uh, my whole 24-hour period now, my whole 24-hour, was I thinking on things that are lovely, things that are true, without thinking the way God told me to think. Now, here's the issue. You and I can only grade our own paper. <laughs> you grade your own paper. This ain't not, uh, the teacher don't need to grade this paper. You need to grade this paper. And you need to say, hey, listen, I was doing okay the first two hours, <laughs> okay? But that third hour, God, my mind wanted off into some fleshly stuff. In the, in the fifth hour, God, I went to the left, and you told me don't go that route. All right, round about that sixth hour, well, you were doing okay. Amen. But Lord knows, here come about the eighth hour, okay? <laughs> the eighth hour, you say, well, okay. Uh, half of it, I did okay. I put half down here. I put a fourth down here, all right? So, so you can grade your own paper because God wants to direct me and, and you. He wants to say something to us, okay? So God, God wanted us is to make sure that in this 24-hour period, you need to ask yourself, out of this 24-hour period, did God get any glory out of it all 24 hours? <laughs> Listen, it is time for God to get some glory out of our 24-hour day period. Now, I'm sure that when you first got saved, I know I'm going to put my paper down because I don't mark my own paper. Listen, when you first got saved, amen, you couldn't, you couldn't answer those questions. You may be able to answer only two or three of them in your 24-hour period. But remember now, salvation is, is progressive. It's progressive. So since you've been saved, I'm sure within a 24-hour period, God has been directing your steps and the fact remains that you've been doing things better. Well, matter of fact, last year, well, last year, glory to God, we, had, we was in the COVID, okay? We was in the uh, COVID at home. And I guarantee you within that 24-hour period, I bet you prayed more so than you ever prayed in your life. I bet you studied more scripture in your period, your 24 hour period, than you ever prayed since you've been saved. So, this last year and a half, glory to God, I know that we have improved in, in listening to what or in having God to direct us in the way in which we should go. Okay? So, so I, I wanted you to understand that is that God wants to speak to us. But God is going to speak to us, and he's going to direct our steps in the way in which we should go. Now, we got a, a choice in the matter, but the way in which we should go. So when God says something to us, 
amen, that we need to know whether or not it, is, it, is it good for us. And God ain't going to say nothing to you and I that's not good for us. He's not going to do that, okay? Now, let me do a shift here in my, in my, my last uh, part of this second part series here. In the book of James, hallelujah, in the book of James, uh, the third chapter, verses 13 through 18. Now, what this is, is making a comparison between spiritual and natural, okay? Between earthly wisdom and spiritual wisdom, okay? We still at this 24-hour period again, all right? Now, when we go to the book of James, amen, I want you to go to the book of James, the third chapter, verses 13 uh, through 18. And so I wanted to make sure that you know the difference between spiritual, hallelujah, wisdom and spiritual revel revelation and spiritual, all of this is talking about spiritual here, okay? So I want you to understand, and I want to give a scripture for it because of the fact that I don't want anybody to take it out of, con they think I'm taking it out of contents here. But in Book of James, the third chapter, verse 13 to 18. All right, here we go. Glory to God. Now, <clears throat> here in, in Book of James, the third chapter, verse 13 to uh, 18, he's talking about true and false wisdom. True and false wisdom. Now, I'm going I'm to just, I'm going to just, um, I think um, what I do is, i tell you what i do. I'll let you read it. I'll let you read it. Amen. The book of James, the third chapter, verse 13 to 18. Now, I'm going I'm to do this from a short version standpoint. Now, James makes a comparison with spiritual and natural. He makes a comparison with earthly wisdom decisions and spiritual wisdom decisions. Again, I want you to take another piece of paper, okay? And I want you to write down a 24-hour period. And you write down earthly wisdom and spiritual wisdom. Earthly wisdom and spiritual wisdom. Now, in your, in your deciding factor, I want you to say, was it earthly and how much was it heavenly wisdom? Write it down on a piece of paper and write flesh, heavenly, or divinely directed and think about it. Fleshly, heavenly, or divine uh, wisdom. Did the wisdom that you performed, how much of it was it divinely directed since you woke up this morning, since you went to your daily activities, since you got off of your job? Hallelujah. How much wisdom was it? What type of wisdom actually was it? Was it earthly wisdom? Was it heavenly wisdom? Or was it divinely wisdom? Because remember now, earthly wisdom that come from our soulish era is devilish and demonical. Okay? So, there's only two types of wisdom. There's either is God wisdom, hallelujah, grasping God wisdom, or getting a hold to earthly wisdom. There's only two wisdom. And so in a 24-hour period, hallelujah, how much of it did, did you decide on was it God wisdom? That's what I want you to know. Now, if you have been using earthly wisdom and, and you found out that it, you should have been Godly, divinely directed by the Holy Ghost. Don't beat yourself up. Only thing I want you to do then is repent and say, God, look, I did it my way. I lean to my own understanding. Proverbs 3, 3 through 5, you know, he talks about it. And lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So you seek in the wisdom of God. You want God is to speak to you through the power of the Holy Ghost. 
And so if you found out, glory to God, that you made a bad decision, uh, you, you know, uh, made a bad de <laughs> business deal, glory to God. Only thing I tell you to do is take side with God against yourself. Oh, yes. And say, God, look, I thought I was right, but I was wrong. And especially with married people. I do this with married people all the time. Uh, when, when I'm counseling in marriages and people have been, been married twice, glory to God, I tell them right away, I say, listen, here's the only thing you can do is say, God, look, I thought I had the right one, but I had the wrong one. That's the only thing you can do. Say, I thought I was right, but I was wrong. Now, God, get me out of this mess that I got myself in. <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> the Bible says, what well, God have joined together, let no man put asunder. But if God ain't joined you together, then you're going to have some problems. I'm trying to tell you this right now. But the only thing you can do is repent to God and say, listen, I lean to my own understanding. I listen to my own voice. I listen to the flesh and not the Holy Ghost because you were trying to speak to me and tell me, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, but I, I overrode it. Okay, glory to God. I overrode it. And so, therefore, I wanted you to know that, uh, God, I messed up. So all things you want to do to God is say, God, I want to repent. I, I use earthly wisdom in my decision making. Now, what happens with God during this time period? God will give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Because, why would God give us a new beginning? Because God wants us to have heavenly wisdom. He, want, he said, man devised many things in his heart, but God directs his steps. And so God wants to turn around and give us Heavenly wisdom, right decisions. He want to speak to us. But you need to admit to God that, listen, I lean to my own wisdom. I didn't listen to your voice. I bought this house. I bought this car. I bought these clothes. And I shouldn't have. You see what I'm saying? I was a bad money manager. Only thing God wants you to do is confess to him, come clean. He said, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And earthly wisdom is unrighteousness. Yes, it's not the wisdom of God. So that's the best way you can actually deal with this thing. So, so listen, glory to God. Man, we did... I'm telling you, it was quick on this second part series, but we're going to come back. Amen. We're going to come back. I'm going to write in the book here. I'm going to say start here next time so that I'll make sure that we complete this. But again, glory to God. I want, I want to thank God, amen, for this second part series on when God speaks. And I promise you that I will conclude this in our third part series. Okay? Amen. And so, again, if it's been a blessing to you, I want you to invite somebody. Amen. And then in the comment section, let us know whether or not it was a blessing. Glory to God. Because that, that's our pastor and our aim is to be a blessing and upbuilding our kingdom in the hearts of men. So, again, glory to God. I thank God for the Holy Ghost helping me get through this second part series. Amen. And, and uh, I want you to know. Amen. We only here because we here to live, love, and serve. So until our third part series, I want you to just be blessed of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And so God bless you until next time. Nothing, baby. Go after the ball, fellas. Go nuts.